Hey guys, what's up? It's Jules here for WhatCulture.com with another episode of the most insane things happening in wrestling this week. The show that does exactly what it says on the tin in the most annoying way possible. You're welcome. But before we begin, I know I usually do five points, but I'm going to throw you a little bonus round today because just look up Ric Flair's wedding. Oh, he is going to town on that woman. And Mark, just a little uh, bit of fashion advice, mate. If it's your mate's wedding, doesn't matter if it's his fifth one, maybe put a suit on. <laughs> you cheeky man. But yeah, still, thank you very much for the clickbait image, and let's crack on with the show. This week, the Bella Twins suicide tripped their way onto Raw, went to their private dressing room, only to find shock horror that the Riot Squad had been in there messing around with their stuff. The cheeky whippets. Gah. But then you see something that is just awful. No, it's not the Bella Twins acting, which is pretty pond scum. No, I'm talking about the terrible tagging job that was done in their dressing room, where it was said, breathe out on one, and then it said, fearless Nikki on the other. Then these were crossed out, and it said, fear more Nikki on one, and it said, riot mode on the other. Now, at first you sort of see, yeah, I get what they're trying to do. Then you start asking questions using logic and a brain because you think to yourself, well, does that mean that the Bella Twins had spray painted the original ones in for the Riot Squad to come and cross them out? Or does it actually mean that because of Vince's conditioning that the Riot Squad came in and because they were so hammering on the catchphrases, they accidentally put the wrong tag down and they were like, oh crap, right, got to do that again, guys. We made, they made us look like a right bunch of monkeys, haven't we? And what the hell does Fear More Nikki mean? That makes about as much sense as what Brie then said afterwards by saying that she was going to put down a riot. How do you put down a riot, Brie? How do you put down a riot? It was stupid, it made no sense whatsoever, and still, it's the best thing that the Riot Squad's done at the moment, which is sad. MediaCon has been and gone here in the UK, and we've been left with beautiful memories, beautiful matches, and thanks to Sammy Callahan and Jimmy, thank God for the NHS havoc, one absolutely horrible image that I will never be able to unsee. They weren't content with doing their regular match at the TNA tapings that were going on at the event, which is, you know, a usual level of bloodbath. But Jimmy Havoc decided to get... Oh God, I'm gonna be sick just thinking about it. Yeah, so Jimmy went up to the top rope in order to do a double foot stomp on Sammy. But here's the twist. Sammy was actually lying on some thumbtacks, which would have turned him into a human pincushion. But here's the twist. Jimmy missed and landed foot first onto the thumbtacks. But here's the twist. He wasn't wearing any goddamn shoes. Which meant that his feet... Oh, God, just thinking about it, it's horrible. His feet got absolutely skewered and they ended up looking like f***ing Albert. Oh, it makes me feel sick thinking about it. I cannot express how painful this must have been. And it clearly took Jimmy by surprise because he went down after he landed. He was just like, oh, wow, that is a pain. That is a pain. I don't need to explain why this moment is insane. The man is insane. So I've only got one thing to say. Jimmy done a jump and gave his pins some pins. Are you having a giraffe? Look at him, Phil. Big flaming skeleton Adam Bullborn's here. He made fun of my giraffe. Let's make him pay. Yeah. Let's get him. Yeah. In fact, I've got a great idea. Yeah. Let's get him. I just said that. Good idea, me. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, I'm surprised he hadn't already seen us. Being ginger and tall yeah. is pretty sweet right about now. Two. Yeah, can't right. you zoom over to him? Oh, hello, mate! Oh, hey, hey, dude, how's it going? He's wearing that stupid giraffe hat, I see. <laughs> y yeah. Oh, God! Jesus! Oh! Oh! Welcome to the Philosophical Corner. 
When does a bedtime story not send you to sleep? Oh, Ooh. wow. Phil, again, I'm so glad you're back, dude. And Thanks. just like, it's just great to be a passenger on your brain bus and just knowing that we're out on the freeway screaming ahead into the sunset. Also, it's when Samoa Joe reads a bedtime story so scary that I had to sleep with the light on. <laughs> in Samoa Joe's build to take on AJ at Hell in a Cell, he's been pulling out all the stops recently to get over like a creepy dude. And case in point was this week on SmackDown when he bust out his quite plush looking first novella, Night Night AJ, complete with a lovely picture of him in a suit on the back and read it to the crowd in a manner that made him come across as the creepiest lout to ever wield a kid's book this side of Pee Wee Herman. The delivery, the intensity, the fact that he had a gash on his forehead bigger than one of your mums. There's my one per weekly show. Am I doing that as a gimmick now? was all capped off by the fact that there were some ridiculously cheesy and awful drawings so bad that you probably expect AJ to have them tattooed on him at some point. Zing. The insane thing is here is that this storybook angle, which weirdly enough the WWE have gone to many times over with like Goldberg, Braun Strowman, and back in the past we had Shane and The Undertaker doing it. They love this thing for some reason, but yet still Samoza of Joseph is getting it over. The man has got kids' books over, and he's still coming across like a credible heel. He is insane in how good he is on the mic. This one's weird, because we all remember that Kevin Owens quit and then came back a week later. But finally, we've got an explanation on this week's Raw as to why that was. He's been told, apparently by Constable Corbin, that he's got carte blanche to do whatever he wants. Now, that's quite a brilliant power within the WWE. And how has he used it? Oh, he hasn't inserted himself into a title picture. No, he's used it to attack Bobby Lashley from behind. Yeah. I can't really see what... Oh, oh, it's because Bobby Lashley put Sami Zayn on the shelf. In June. Yeah, you've been sitting on that one for a while, haven't you, Kev? Instead, you prefer to let yourself be made look like an absolute fool at the hands of Braun Strowman. So yeah, you've got the ability to do what you want, but you're coming off a losing streak. I can't really see where you're going with this, mate. So yeah, he's using his powers to beat Bobby's butt. I don't think I would be doing the same if I had that sort of sway within the WWE. If I had that power, that opportunity, I would, like I say, insert myself into a title picture. I'd chuck Finn Balor a decent storyline because God knows he's starving for one right now. And then I'd sally right up to Stephanie McMahon, look her in the eyes and call her a cunt. Just like Scott Steiner did in a recent interview with Simon Miller. It's a good plug, that, isn't it? <laughs> Moving on. And we end on a high note by talking about Renee Young and the fact that she's finally joined their full-time commentary team on the main roster, sending Coach back down to the pre-show to the booze of no one. Now, Renee Young is over with the fans and with shows like Talking Smack has shown that she has a real passion for the sport. Plus, she's actually quite fun on the mic as well, so that's, that's a triple bonus. And actually, it's a huge milestone for the WWE that they don't really seem to be harping about, which makes it even better. But there was one person who tried to absolutely sour the parade, and that was, weirdly enough, ECW legend Sabu, who said in a tweet, and I'm quoting here, I'm quoting here, so don't come out with pitchforks, she is the first non f but she is one of many cocksuckers. Wow. I mean, I'm not really sure what to say about this one, other than the fact that in 2015, Sabu smeared a hotel room with blood and sh and this tweet was stinkier. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame, actually, that one of... He's an ECW legend, but all he's showing here is that he's an extremely c***y wrestler. Still, good news that she's on. And there we go, those are the most insane things happening in wrestling this week. Now to close out the show the only way I know how by reading my favourite comments from last week's episode. And the first one comes from Card Commander who says, Drake Maverick looking like Kurt Angle when he joined the Shield. Like, yay, I'm finally useful. I like that one a lot. And we also had Jamie Holmes who said, Undertaker has druids, Joey Ryan has penises, Jules would have giraffes. Can you imagine the amount of animal cruelty that would be going on to get that to happen? Fantastic. As always, a massive thank you to Michael Sidgwick and Phil Chambers for their continued work on this show, as well as to you at home for watching. As always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!